Hello again, Ian Stokey with Mastermind Games, this time painting Monster Apocalypse and a Power Plant. Uniform Gray. So, uh, one of the buildings, this is based off the nuclear power plant from the first edition. But, uh, like the all the updates, uh, for second edition, more detail, bigger, bulkier, and abilities, and combustible power producer. So if you um, are securing it and power up, you get an additional die power dice. Another ability called uh, electrical node, which lets mechanical monsters heal if they destroy it with a brawl attack. And Blast Radius, which destroys the units adjacent to it when it's destroyed. So, and it's doing that weird thing again, where it seems to repel the paint, even though it's primed fully. I don't know what's going on. No, well. Now, there is a certain temptation to a Simpsons reference on this. We'll see if I can restrain myself. Now, I'm trying to buy buildings in sets of four, which is a maximum you can take of any given building, but they're, we'll say it's not working out uh, too well so far, um, just because of availability issues. So I'm just going to go over almost the whole thing in this, and then pick out all their colors later. Right. I'm using just enough water to thin the paint so my brush is moist but not overly wet. I don't care if I get the windows in these openings or not, because they're going to be lit up by the end of the video. I find this repelling thing that's going on very strange, because it only seems to do this with the uh, army painter paints. And unlike some models which have been sitting on my painting table for months, up to a year in some cases. I got this this week, and it's, in fact, I it's only been primed for like a day and a half. I try to make certain I've got a nice solid coat of this all over. Looks all right. So let that dry. Move on a bit. All right. Next, let's see. We're gonna look blue zero nine one one five. We need a little bit. This is just going on the doors. Fire red zero nine zero zero four. Want a little bit of color in here. Carefully starting. This here, I just want to get the. Uh, of seam here.
rim. Keeping my brush moist but not overly wet. Then down here, this scaffolding below the cooling tower. To be kind of careful. Make sure I get a nice solid coat. Probably have to touch up the gray a little bit. And speaking of, I decided to do the inside of the cooling tower off camera. And a base coat down there, but it is going to be lit up. I'm probably going to have to do more than one coat. Fine. I'm thinking I must have not gotten a Good a uh, solid coverage of the primers I thought right down here. That might be what's causing it push back. And this is made of a more rubbery kind of resin than uh, what privateer presses used before, so it's something new. And I think I want to get this giant hexagon on, on top. Why not? Okay. Let that dry completely. And then I can start shading. Okay, time to shade. Vampire Red. Let me mix this up fairly thoroughly. part paint to one part water, diluting it, one part water to one part paint, oh boy, diluting it into a wash. And carefully go over the red. And that right there is why I keep the paper towel handy to blot this out. Well, for dry brushing, which I'll do later. And the surface of these, uh, this, is, this is very flat, doesn't have a whole lot of contours, but the, uh, sort of, uh, Scaffolding down at the base of the cooling tower, it does. Kind of talking awkwardly today. I suppose maybe I'm going through gaming withdrawal since all events at my friendly local gaming store have been uh, cancelled due to the coronavirus, at least to the end of the month. I've been doing this, but uh, <laughs> I do miss gaming. will flow into the recesses and make them stand out all the more when I highlight. And I can only shade one color at a time because of what how much 
the simplified scheme and how it, many colors were adjacent to each other. I'm slaughtering the English language here. So. Okay. All right. Let that dry completely, then get the upper shading. Stormy Gray, 09088. This be a little tricky. Thin it out. Suppose I'll start right in here. Just go over the gray. And make sure it ends up in the channels in between the concrete slabs. So, well, in first edition, this building was a nuclear power plant. And very much looks like one. <clears throat> Excuse me. I believe it might be uh, powered by the unusual crystals from the Harbinger Comet, which have been mentioned as being the power source for guards as supermax in the current edition. Just a bit of uh, postulating on my uh, account. I think I'm using that word properly. So now I'm gripping by the uh, scaffolding at the base of the cooling tower. <laughs> I don't care if it gets in these slots here because those are going to be lit up, which will be the next step I do once all this is dried up. do any kind of Simpsons reference, but there is a certain temptation to do so. I'm being real careful on the door frame. I want to get the frame, not the glass, the windows. Okay, I think that's got it well enough anyway. Notice I'm using the entire side of the brush for this, not just the tip. Especially get these wider areas. Keeping the brush nice and wet during all of this. And there's no way of doing this. I won't be at least a little awkward, so that's all there is to it. That bit to cut into the red. Sometimes you can absorb a spillover with your brush, sometimes not. And I decided off camera to get the inside of the cooling tower. So instead of doing the entire interior lit up, I'll do a more gradiated effect. I think that's the word I'm looking for. Honestly, the day job I work has 
made my vocabulary worse over time. Working with people who can't really speak English despite considering it their native language and exclusive language. In fact, I've got coworkers who speak English as a second language who try harder because, well, they just try harder. All right. It's pretty good. Let that dry, then I can prep the lighting effects. Okay. Matt White, I'll prep some lighting effects. Start by just putting a little shine in the doors here. And thinning the paint out just a little bit at this point. slots here. I would have liked to do, uh, I think I mentioned this, all four power plants I want to eventually get at once, but I can only get my hands on one right now, so that just is what it is. And it looks like new buildings are imminent. There's pre-orders up on uh, some sites. I don't feel sick, but I do feel overtired, and I haven't pushed myself very hard at the day job lately. Which has another set of problems. Those problems being, uh, it's retail. Critical retail, because it sells food and medicine. And many of the people there, both on and off the staff, both co-workers, customer, co both co-workers, customers, and vendors, have the hygiene standards of a sewer rat. That's a bit too thick. Better. And I'm not concerned about this uh, spillover that's happening. It'll just help sell the illusion that this is glowing from within when I do the lighting. And now the inside of the tower. I'm just going to do a partial. I'm going to try to thin it out as I go up. And that should do. Now, once that dries completely, I can uh, do the lighting. Okay, lighting. Ash and blue, 0905 sun. Thinning it with two parts water to one part paint. 
actually not ashen blue yet. First cyan blue zero nine one one seven. Just plug it up. Need to get the doors first, and then I can do the rest of it. Two to three parts water to one part paint. Doors, keys for some of the white to show through. Now, ash and blue zero nine zero five seven. Two to three parts water to one part paint. Keep the brush nice and wet. Fill in the uh, slots inside the building. Kind of giving it a glow. Never heard of, uh, or no, that's not the right wording. I don't know if there are any radioactive materials that actually glow green, which is uh, how it's typically depicted in the media. But I did find out after stumbling across a short documentary that some radioactive materials can actually glow pale blue. So I across a short documentary on a uh, something called the Devil's Core, which was a third nuclear core for an atomic bomb developed during World War II that was going to be dropped on Japan. But uh, since they capitulated after the second, there was no need to use it, so it was studied for years. And the first couple of people who tried studying it, while they weren't too keen on following safety precautions and wound up killing themselves from radiation poisoning. Hence the nickname. Let's go over all this here. Now eventually, it was uh, rendered down and made into fuel rods, I think, eventually. But, Something I stumbled across. I can't remember where on YouTube I found it. So that's got the lighting effects going. So once that completely dries, I can highlight and wrap up. Okay, next step is to highlight Phoenix Red. Well, it is. Yeah, Phoenix Red 09005. Using a dry brushing technique, straight paint, no water, ragged feathered brush, something like that. Put most of your paint out on a paper towel. And while well, he does the RDB effect, it's not going to be as prominent on these flatter surfaces here, but. against the uh, corners of this giant nut, or whatever it's supposed to be. It'll be much more prominent as well as along the struts here. And 
you can see if I go any against him, that's really catching it and brightening it up. And Misty Gray, 09090. Refreshing paint as needed. A bit too much there. Exterior. I'm not going to get the inside of the uh, cooling tower here. Okay, that's got the painting. I need to let that dry a little bit, but there's one more step to do once it does. Okay, okay. final step that I can do on camera, the very last step is going to be uh, varnishing it. So I'll get the base out of its protective little sleeve there. I like to keep them in these till the very last minute. And taking a thick cyanoacrylate super glue. Which keeps getting closed over on me, but that's all right, it's fine. Okay. Uh, paper clip down the hole. This was supposed to be a short clip to top it off with. That should do it. There we go. Just get a stream along the foundation here. Just a thin one is all I need. Carefully center this the way the way I want. Just hold that down. You have to got to be careful with this glue. It will glue your hands shut. 
No, maybe, definitely will glue your hands shut if you're not careful with it. Give it at least 20 seconds to cure. So, then, it's, uh, yeah, it's sitting there pretty good. I uh, got it very close to the edge here, but that's okay. It's still on the confines of the base. Maybe I can, uh, play a little bit. Not really, so it's it's good. It's good. It'll be fine. So, power plant from, that, from uh, Monster Apocalypse. Got uh, three more building videos and a monster and some units coming up. So, uh, until next time, I am Ian Stuckey with Mastermind Games signing out.